Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Wednesday, August the 5th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night in peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Continue our, kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. O Lord, in your strength the King rejoices, and in your salvation how greatly he exults. You have given him his heart's desire, and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet him with rich blessings. You set a crown of fine gold upon his head. He asked life of you, you gave it to him, length of days forever and ever. His glory is great through your salvation. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him. For you make him most blessed forever, you make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Acts chapter 28. After we were brought safely through, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The native people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all because it had begun to rain and it was cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island called Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dysentery. And Paul visited him and prayed, and putting his hands on him, healed him. And when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They also honored us greatly. And when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. After three months, we will set sail in a ship that had wintered in the island, a ship of Alexandria, with the twin gods as a figurehead. Putting in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days, and from there we made a circuit and arrived at Regium, and after one day a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Putioli. There we found brothers and were invited to stay with them for seven days, and so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. And our Book of Concord reading tonight is Article 28 on Church Authority. This will be Part 1 of 3. And then we're done with the Augsburg Confession. This is, this is the last article. Okay.
There has been great controversy about the power of the bishops in which some have terribly confused the power of the church with the power of the state. This confusion has produced great war and riot. All the while, the popes claiming the power of the keys have instituted new services and burdened consciences with church discipline and excommunication. But they have also tried to transfer the kingdoms of this world to the church by taking the empire away from the emperor. Learned and godly people have condemned these errors in the church for a long time. Therefore, our teachers, in order to comfort people's consciences, were constrained to show the difference between the authority of the church and the authority of the state. They taught that both of them are to be held in reverence and honor as God's chief blessings on earth, because they have God's command. Our teacher's position is this, the authority of the keys, Matthew 16, 19, or the authority of the bishops, according to the gospel, is a power or commandment of God to preach the gospel, to forgive and retain sins, and to administer sacraments. Christ sends out his apostles with this command, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. And in Mark 16, 15, Christ says, Go, proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. This authority is exercised only by, only by teaching or preaching the gospel and administering the sacraments either to many or to individuals according to their calling. In this way are given not only bodily, but eternal things, eternal righteousness, the Holy Spirit, and eternal life. These things cannot reach us except by the ministry of the word and the sacraments, as Paul says. The gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Therefore, the church has the authority to grant eternal things, and exercises this authority only by the ministry of the word. So it does not interfere with civil government any more than the art of singing interferes with civil, gov civil government. For civil government deals with other things than the gospel does. Civil rulers do not defend minds but bodies and bodily things against obvious injuries. They restrain people with the sword and physical punishment in order to preserve civil justice and peace. Therefore, the church's authority and the state's authority must not be confused. The church's authority has its own commission to teach the gospel and to administer the sacraments, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Let it not break into the office of another. Let it not transfer the kingdoms of this world to itself. Let it not abolish the laws of civil rulers. Let it not abolish lawful obedience. Let it not interfere with judgments about civil ordinances or contracts. Let it not dictate laws to civil authorities about the form of society. As Christ says, my kingdom is not of this world. Also, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? Paul also says, our citizenship is in heaven, and the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. This is... This is how our teachers distinguish between the duties of these two authorities. They command that both be honored and acknowledged as God's gift and blessings. If, if bishops have any authority of the state, this is not because they are bishops. In other words, it is not by the gospel's commission. It is an authority that they have received from kings and emperors for the purpose of administering the civil affairs of what belongs to them in society. This is another office, not the ministry of the gospel. Therefore, when a question arises about the bishop's ju jurisdiction, civil authority must be distinguished from the church's jurisdiction. Again, the only authority that belongs to the bishops is what they have according to the gospel, or by divine right, as they say, for they have been given the ministry of, this, of the word and sacraments. They have no other authority according to the gospel, then the authority to forgive sins, to judge doctrine, to reject doctrines contrary to the gospel, and to exclude from the communion of the church wicked people whose wickedness is known. They cannot exclude people with human force, but simply by the word. According to this gospel authority as a matter of necessity by divine right, congregations must obey them. Or Luke 
10.16 says, The one who hears you, hears me. But when they teach or establish anything against the gospel, then the congregations are forbidden by God's command to obey them. Beware of false prophets, Matthew 7.13. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one preached to you, let him be accursed, Galatians 1.8. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth, the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. 2 Corinthians 13, 8-10 The canonical laws also command this, and St. Augustine writes, Neither must we submit to Catholic bishops if they chance to err, or hold anything contrary to the canonical scriptures of God. If the bishops have any other authority or jurisdiction in hearing and judging certain cases as of matrimony or of tithes, they have this authority only by human right. If the bishops do not carry out their duties in these areas, the princes are bound, even if they do not want to, to dispense justice to their subjects in order to retain, maintain peace. And we will pick up part two tomorrow evening. And we join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our Wednesday prayer is the shorter litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord, to comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you delivered us from the enemy through the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom we are united in holy baptism. Continue to deliver us, we pray, from our diseases and afflictions by your merciful gift of healing, as you feed us holy food and give us the cup of everlasting life to drink. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. 
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.